What is going on guys welcome back to the python tutorial series for advanced programmers in today's video we're going to talk about the factory design pattern so let us get right into it so the factory design pattern is just one of many object oriented design patterns and the goal of such an object oriented design pattern is usually to just increase the modularity to increase the so-called separation of concerns which basically means that we want to have the individual pieces of the program the individual classes the individual uh, modules mind their own business, do their own job, and be very good at that job. Um, and the factory design pattern is one such pattern that allows us to do that, and it's very useful when we want to decide during runtime what particular instance we want to create. So let's say we have, for example, uh, an abstract person interface, an abstract person class, and then we want to have students and teachers, and they're both persons, obviously. Uh, but we don't want to decide in the code, I want to create a teacher or I want to create a student. We want to make it dynamically during runtime. So I know I want to create a person object, but I don't know while I'm writing the code if I want to have a student here or a teacher. We want to decide during runtime. And if we want to do that, we can use the factory pattern to do that. But one thing that you need to keep in mind here is that those design patterns are, us are usually just useful if you use them in larger projects. So you don't want to use them in your 50 line Python script. You want to use them in big applications where you have multiple classes and multiple Python files and modules working together uh, because otherwise they're just increasing. This is a, the con side of, of such a design pattern. Uh, they're increasing complexity. They're decreasing readability. They're making the code more difficult to understand. Um, and this is a large price to pay if you don't get anything out of it. So let's just look at an, at an example here. Let's say we have an abstract class person. So for this, we need to say from ABC, which stands for abstract class, import ABC meta and abstract, abstract uh, static method. There you go. And now we're going to create a person interface. So we're going to say class person and one notation that is best practice or the convention is if something is an interface, because in Python, we cannot just say interface person. If something is an interface, we call it I whatever. So I person in this case. And here we're going to say meta equals ABC meta, which basically means that this is an abstract class, we cannot create any instances of it. Uh, we're going to see what that means in a second. And then we're going to say abstract static method. And we can say, for example, def person method, this is just a basic method that every person has to implement. Of course, this is just uh, an abstract example here, we're not you could you could say, for example, this is the person aging or the person studying or the person doing something. This is just a basic function. And here we're just going to add a comment that this is an interface method because the interface uh, the, the what, what an interface basically is, is just a definition of the signature. So we know, okay, we're going to have those functions, those methods, but we're not going to say what they actually do. So this is just mentioning that each person has to implement the person method. So we're going to see that this doesn't work because if I now say p1 equals I person, for example, like that, and then p1 dot person method or something. Um, now I write this, we're going to see that this is not possible. Uh, because it's an abstract class, we cannot just go ahead and uh, actually one thing I made a mistake here meta class is ABC meta, then it's not going to work. Uh, this basically means that we're creating an abstract class and the definition of an abstract class is that we cannot create instances of it. So uh, you're going to see here that we get the error abstract class I person um, with abstract methods, we cannot instantiate this and we're going to see in the terminal. If I now go ahead and run Python, oh shit, what's happening here? Uh, okay, I, I used the paste here. Let me just clear this real quick. There you go, Python three, main.py. You can see I can't instantiate the abstract class I person. Um, so that's exactly what we want, actually. And now we're going to have another class student, which is going to, uh, to inherit from this I person interface is going to implement that I person interface. And we're going to override this method. Now, if I don't do that, if I just say, I don't know, def uh, 
in it and I have a basic constructor here with I don't know self dot name equals basic student name it's a default name then if I try to say s1 equals student and or actually just that we're not going to be able to create an instance of student because student did not override the abstract static method person method we need to do that otherwise we cannot treat this as a non abstract class. So after the constructor, we're going to say def person method with a self keyword here. Um, actually, do we need the self keyword? Yeah, I mean, we don't need it. I don't, I'm not sure if we need it. But we're going to just say print I am a student like that. So this is the basic student class, which is also a person. And then we're going to have another one, which is a teacher. And this is also going to be a person. And we're going to also have an init method. So a constructor basically self dot name equals basic teacher name. And then we have person method self again. And now we say print, I am a teacher, this is basically just for us to see uh, if the object is a teacher or a student. And now what we can do here, of course, is in Python, we can just go ahead uh, and create those objects by saying s1 equals student, student, and then I can say s1 person method. And here I can say t1 equals teacher, t1 dot person method. So we can now go into the terminal here and run this again, you can see I'm a student, I'm a teacher. So that's the very basic stuff. What we now want to have is we want to decide during runtime. Uh, we know that we want to create a person method, uh, a person class, sorry, a person object. Uh, but we don't know if this object shall be a student or a teacher and we want to decide that dynamically during runtime. So one way to do that, this is the the not so beautiful way to do it is to just say, I don't know, choice equals input type or something. And then we could just say, okay, if the choice is student, then just go ahead and create a student and so on. But that's not the factory design pattern. The factory design pattern is to now have um, a, a factory class, which actually builds person objects. So uh, we actually want to say class person factory. And this person factory is going to build the person that we want to build. So we're going to say def build person or get person or produce person, call it whatever you want. I'm not sure what the best practice definition uh, or the best practice name here is. Um, and what we're going to pass here is the type. So we're going to pass the type of the person by saying person type. And this is in our case, just going to be a string. Uh, and by the way, this, of course, is a static method. Um, so we're going to say build person. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to say, okay, if the person type is student, then we're going to return a new student. Then if the person type is teacher, we're going to return a new teacher object. And if none of those two happened, we're going to have an invalid uh, type. So we, we can either raise an exception here, we can just say something like which is not best practice, obviously, we can say invalid type. And for example, we could return negative one. This is what we could do. We can also uh, come on, we can also uh, have an exception here, we can also throw an exception or raise an exception and say, okay, this was an invalid type. So handle this exception, whatever. Uh, I'm going to do it just like that here. And now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and create this main section here. And we can say uh, that we can have the choice again. So we can say choice input, uh, what type of person do you want to create Then backslash n here. Um, and then we can just create the person depending on that input. So we can actually go ahead and say, um, person, sorry, person factory dot build person, 
depending on the choice. And then once we have that person, actually we need to save it in an object here. So we need to say person equals that. And then we can say person dot person method. And you're going to see that if we now run this, I can enter student, for example, and I'm going to get I'm a student, I can enter teacher, I'm get I'm getting I'm a teacher and I can uh, enter something else. And we're going to get invalid type and an attribute error and so on. But as you can see, we can dynamically decide if we want to build a student or a teacher during runtime. So we don't have to know in advance, we can do it on the fly. And the factory pattern is very useful if we want to do this quite often, because then we can just reuse this factory, we can just say factory build person, and then pass the type. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.